What do you think about the whole Andrew Tate rise and cancel? For who I assume is an intelligent person, I think he should have done better. I watched it thinking, this is your time. Be your father's son. He didn't. And he leaned on Islam a few times. And I was like, you're, you're being a prick. Welcome to Disruptors, and I'm Rob Moore. Now on the show, we have the controversial personal trainer turned social media influencer, James Smith. Before we get into this, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. You mentioned Andrew Tate. What do you think about the whole Andrew Tate's rise and cancel? For who I assume is an intelligent person, I think he should have he should have done better. So, chess champion, you know, uh, dad from military background, obviously intelligent and driven, and whatever, straight white male, obviously. <laughs> and um, I get that he was identifying and becoming a persona to manipulate the system of socials or whatever. And I, I get that because I do it myself. There was a time to stop. There was a time to cash out. There was a time to embrace humility. There was a time to pull the veil on whatever character he was playing and he didn't do it in time and he faced the repercussions. Do you only know when that time is when you've gone too far though? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think for myself, like, there's obviously this like, we call it 2018 James. I was ready to burn down anyone. Then as I get to 2022 James, I've kind of, done longer format stuff, admitted even with you today that I was an arsehole, I regret some of the things I've done and that I was just trying to get a leg up. The whole Joe Wicks thing, for instance, I'm happy to say that. If I was to continue 2018 James on a trajectory, it would just hit a point, I'd just burn into the ground. So there has to be a maturation process in your brand and persona. So when you say burn into the ground, do you mean you would hate yourself or you would end up getting cancelled and something bad happened? Not even cancelled or something bad happening. I think people just go, yeah, we've had enough, mate. Oh, guess what? You find someone, oh, you think someone's a prick? Cool. Tell us what else, you know? It would just get to the point where people would just be sick of the negativity. Yeah. They thought, let's calm it down a bit, let's give some life advice, let's try and give valuable content, and maybe stop trying to attack people so much and just trying to benefit the situation. Yeah. He could have, he could have done that, he probably should have. And yeah. I could even tell you the exact podcasts where, when he went on Nelk Boys in Croatia, a big American podcast, I was like, I watched it thinking, this is your time. Be be your father's son. And he didn't. And he leaned on Islam a few times and I was like, you're, you're being a prick. And it was annoying because I followed him for like four years. A friend of mine, we were talking about the follow one follow culture. Where I see people unfollow me and refollow me. I'm like, what was with these people? And my friend said to me four years ago, he goes, there's only one person that I followed and unfollowed. And he goes, look at this prick. And I followed him four years ago. So I've watched him for quite a while. Mm. And I was disappointed when I watched Nelt Boys. So I was like, mate, don't, you're portraying a misogynistic turn point and you're trying to use Islam as your backup so that people, when they criticize you, they'll, they'll be seen as like Islam criticizers. And I was like, it was disappointing. I was genuinely disappointed, but the thing was... So you think he's that engineered and calculated about it all? Yeah, I would like to think so. Yeah. And again, I've never met him, I've only, I'm as guilty as everyone else on yeah. the left. And why would you like to think that it was engineered? Um, because I could understand why he would do it and it obviously worked. From a marketer standpoint, I was fascinated. And what annoyed me was, uh, I was losing hundreds of followers a day because I was following him during the cancellation period. People were like, I'm in your program, I'm gonna leave if you don't unfollow him. And I'm like, guys, I'm curious, I'm a digital marketer. Mm. I'm, I've been watching this guy for four years, I'm as disappointed as you are. But I'm not gonna unsubscribe to watching the demise of someone because I can learn from his demise. And it was annoying that every, it became mob mentality. Yeah. People were like, anyone that follows him is bad. I'm like, Joe Rogan follows him. I think Joe Rogan's a great guy. Yeah. We're all just watching this guy portray this character and yeah it was one of those things where um it was a bit bit disappointing but oh well like i'm not gonna lose any sleep over it he actually we spoke about creating a, a book maybe for young males there's definitely a figurehead position that needs to be filled yeah so i'm not saying that i'm gonna be the next andrew tate but i'm saying that should have been a wake up for a lot of people that you know jordan peterson as well there there do need to be role models to help men on their path of life because I didn't particularly have a, a male figurehead to look up to. Maybe some mentors in the PT world, but you know, it, our parents are so valuable to us and they should instill values into us, but they can't show us how the world works or how we fit into it because the world is so different to what it was then to what it is now. We have a quick fire round we always finish with. Up for it? Yeah. All right. Um, generally, people don't end up answering the questions quickly. You can do what you want, depending on how itchy you are to leave. <laughs> Do we have true freedom of speech right now? No. We don't. 
certain things. You know, you can't use the C word on uh, YouTube anymore. Uh, demonetized for that. Uh, and they put it with two- Beat me. Yeah, <laughs> two very offensive words. Two words you would never say ever, ever in speech. Now the C word's gone up with that. And I joke in my live show, I talk about the origin of the word. In the 13th century, the C word was the anatomical terms in linguistic journals of how you would explain female genitalia. It was even in street names. So there's that from the swear word standpoint, but there's also um, even podcasts are being deleted for talking about Andrew Tate's ban. Not in the detail we have, but... As in they go into more detail, you mean? Yeah, yeah. maybe it was a clip from it. So, you know, freedom of speech isn't freedom of speech. It's nearly freedom of speech. It's enough to paint the guys, but yeah. Uh, a lot of things you're not allowed to say, especially if it's anti-narrative. I didn't believe this until I used uh, DuckDuckGo, the search engine that's different to Google. So if you try and find some things on topics like Tate, you type it in, Google, nothing. DuckDuckGo, you find all the topics that are hidden from search engines. So that's quite a cool one. That's a bit of Tim Foro hat on. <laughs> Is there an argument to say, well, their platform, their rules? Yeah, absolutely. But then who's governing the rules? Is it the platform? Is it the government? Who, is it? I think, Who should it be? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Ivermectin was an interesting one. Again, I was pro-vaccine. I was saying to people, stop being a fuckwit, get vaccinated. I want to go back to Australia. So then Joe Rogan took Ivermectin and he was like, oh my God, horse dewormer, whatever. But over a billion humans have had Ivermectin. So you're like, is it a horse dewormer? And then there's all of that. I'm pretty sure they've just slyly put Ivermectin into the uh, uh, medical list of tr effective remedies for COVID-19. They just slipped it in there like last week. And everyone's like, hold on a second. Wasn't that what you were deplatforming people for a year ago? So, you know, they, it was very smart. Uh, Brett Weinstein, I think, that was one of the first ones that go, hey, by the way, ivermectin is something else that people could use alongside. When you go to Texas, I was in Texas in December, everyone's got a stash of ivermectin. They're not uh, vaccinated. They go, if I get it, I'm just going to take this. But yeah, you couldn't say that. So no, I don't think freedom of speech exists. Not as bad as other countries like socialist states. It's not North Korea. It's not Russia. Mm. But it's not quite there. Mm. Who controls the world? I don't know. It's not Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> the deep state. I don't know, you'd like to think the people. I honestly don't know. I don't think about that question enough. My mental computing hasn't wandered off into that enough. Um, I don't know. You're going to keep me awake with that tonight. Well, something that's just really interesting what you said um, is I don't think about that enough. If there's things to lie awake about, who controls our world is probably one of them, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I joke about this as well. When people say, what's your celebrity crush? And I say, I don't think about that. Because it's mental computing to a scenario I'll never use. You know, there's no point in me thinking about, you know, a fit celebrity and banging her because I'll never bang her. So it's a waste of mental computing. Now, I don't think we'll ever know who runs the world. I'd rather be thinking about aliens or like Roswell or all of those things because I don't think we'd ever get an answer of uh, who runs the world. So it's one of those things I should put to bed. Think about other things, mm. like property prices. <laughs> and investment. The inflation. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and you want to watch the full, raw, uncut interview with James Smith, you can watch it here. <laughs>